All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Can everybody hear us? Okay, great. We are going to get started. I am Anna McCall. I am the Administrative Director here at Keystone Camp, and with me is Martha Sharp. I'm the Assistant Director. A couple of housekeeping things. If you will look at your screen, in the bottom left-hand corner, there is a chat box. So if you have questions while we're doing this, you feel free to type them in there, and we will answer them um, when we can. So welcome, everybody. We're so excited that you have joined us. Can everybody hear us okay? If you have any trouble, um, please let us know in the chat boxes. All right, it's 7.01, let's get started. So this is Keystone Camp's first year new family webinar. And we're all excited to meet you guys. It's counting down very quickly. We have like 47 days for some of you. So it's coming. How exciting. I know, I can't wait to see you. Um, okay, so we have a short PDF presentation for you, and then you guys will have a chance to ask questions after we finish. So on your screen right now should be our very first slide. Oh, good. And no, the rainbow is not Photoshopped. <laughs> um, so funny. Okay, so when you guys pull through the gate to Keystone Camp, this is what you're going to see. Um, our office is here to your left, and in front of you, the green grassy area is known as the green. That's where we do flag, which is part of our day. So welcome to camp. We're going to pretend like you've just now pulled through the gates. Okay, guys. So as we said, we've just pulled through the gates here at Keystone Camp. Um, so we're doing something a little different uh, this summer. So 10 a.m. is actually going to be the arrival time for all of our new families, which is you guys. Um, so when you pull in the main drive, uh, they're gonna, you're going to find our maintenance staff is going to greet you and take your trunks and go ahead and get that up to the cabins for you. And then we're going to have you drive around and park right behind the gym where you're going to see some exciting faces. So one of the keystone traditions after you've arrived on opening day is you'll park after dropping your trunk off and you'll walk over the bridge. The bridge once you pass over, the bottom right hand, left hand picture, I'm sorry, is what you're going to see. These are going to be all of our staff members. They are going to be so excited and yelling and singing and super pumped to meet all of you. So one of these friendly faces will grab you guys and walk you up to your cabin. If you guys are not going to be driving to camp, we do have a shuttle service to and from the airport. So Martha's going to talk a little bit about that. That's right. So one of the things we want to stress from the very beginning is if you are planning on having your daughter fly into the Asheville or Greenville Airport, that you fill out the transportation form on Camp and Touch. Um, so please, please do that so we can know those arrival times. Um, we really want your daughter to be landing between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. That way she has enough time to get to camp, get settled, get to know everyone. It makes things run. Uh, a lot more smoothly. Um, but this is a really easy process, isn't it, Anna? I mean, we'll have someone in their Keystone uniform greeting your daughter at the airport, taking her straight, you know, back to her new home at Keystone. Um, just to, we'll talk about this a little more at the end, but with closing, um, you're also going to want to make sure that you're scheduling your daughter's departure flight um, a little bit later, uh, around that 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. time slot. Um, because because she's an unaccompanied minor, we have to have her there an hour and a half before that flight time, and we would hate to have your daughter waking up at 3 a.m. to come home to you sad and cranky. That's right. So closing day, please make sure you make those flights around that time, um, especially if you're flying from the Greenville Spartanburg Airport. It's about a three-hour lead time from camp. So if you book her a 7 a.m. flight, then we're going to have to leave camp at 4 a.m., and that's not fun for anybody. So if you have any questions on flying to camp, please let us know. Um, we're happy to help. So now that you've gotten to camp and you have met all the friendly counselors and you're in the cabin, you're going to start your nesting. So this is a great time for you to kind of 
help your daughter get organized and settled into her new cabin life. But we really kind of encourage you all not to linger too long. That way she can jump right into the activities with the other girls. We find that it's really helpful for, for that transition period that you kind of let her make her feel comfortable and then kind of appropriately flank out. That's right. So just for you guys, after you drop them off at camp and you check them in and they're all ready to start their camp experience, we feed them lunch, which is always chicken fingers and french fries on opening day. It's kind of comforting. A, it's comfort food. It's a familiar meal. It kind of helps ease them into camp life. So after they have their lunch on opening day, they will get a tour of activities and they'll sign up for their schedule. And that's one of the things that makes Keystone unique is that your schedule is your choice. So the girls will have a chance to pick what activities they want to take after they get a tour. And at any time, if they want to switch or try something different, they're certainly welcome to do that. So what is important to pack, Martha Sharp? Well, that's a great that you asked that. Um, we have actually have a video that we'll uh, put on our website that you all can kind of check out later. But it's really great. Um, you're going to want to label everything. I know that um, with the big loads of laundry we can, we're doing and everyone kind of packs the same thing, you know, a lot of Nike shorts, it's really important to make sure we're labeling everything. So they have some great options out there, like those iron-on patches, some of that labeling tape is always great. Um, another thing that you're going to want to make sure you're bringing um, that you can actually buy here at camp is our camp uniform and those ties that we wear on Sundays, which um, we kind of get questions about sometimes, but um, this year we're offering them at camp, so you can kind of try them on and figure out your right size. And that's also the same way with the team t-shirts, and a lot of our apparel is actually brought in-house this year. That's right. So our camp uniform is a white polo shirt with the Keystone Camp logo embroidered on the chest. Um, it's also a navy blue pair of shorts and a blue tie, like a just goes around your neck. Easy tie. So we wear the uniforms on Sundays. If you want to check out in your account, um, there are lots of pictures that you guys have access to right now. And if you look at the Sunday pictures, that will show you an example of what our uniform is. And then every camper is on a team. We have four different teams at camp. And when I sent out the spring mailing email to you guys, it should have had your daughter's team name in the email. But if you have any questions about that, please feel free to call. And just to clarify, we in the past have only been able to, you've only been able to purchase the uniforms and team teams online. But this year you will be able to, to buy them on opening day. If you would rather go ahead and order them online and have it shipped directly to your house so that you can pack it in the trunk, that is definitely an option. We use a website called Everything Summer Camp. Um, but if you would rather wait until you get here, you will be able to purchase it in the Tuck store on opening day. Oh, also, one note about laundry is every cabin has laundry day once a week. So you will have the opportunity to... Um, You'll have a laundry, your cabin will have a, a laundry bag and they'll get laundry done once a week. So I know sometimes I get questions from parents that say, oh, they've been wearing the same shorts and pictures three days in a row. But rest assured, every cabin gets laundry done once a week. Speaking of shipping and packing, Martha, did you know that you can ship your trunk to camp? Wow, why don't you tell me more about that, Anna? That sounds great. <laughs> okay, so you're, you guys are certainly welcome to bring your trunk with you to camp. Um, the guys will unload it and drive it up to your cabin, so you don't have to worry about carrying a heavy trunk up the hill. But if you're far away or if your camper is flying, it is definitely easier in some cases to ship your trunk. So to do that, we go through the UPS store in Brevard, they do offer a discount if you um, ship your trunk both ways through the store. And there's two different options. There's a PDF form, which the example is shown on the left-hand side. That form you do actually need to print out and return to the store with your payment information because the UPS store charges the payment on there. They, they handle all of that. 
But new for this year is an online form. The link can be found in your forms dashboard. So this form you will fill out in your forms dashboard electronically. It goes straight to the UPS store and it has a little bit more information on it. So um, it's got some estimated trunk costs and um, just a little bit more FAQs. So either one of those is fine, but just wanted to let you know you do have the option to do both. Oh, wow. Look at our fun nurses. Um, these are some of our nurses from the Keystone Camp Infirmary. On opening day, we ask that every parent and every camper stop by the infirmary. A great time to do that would be after you have checked in and gotten your camper settled. A lot of families do this on the way out of camp. So we just want every camper and family to meet our nurses. It kind of helps the campers feel more comfortable if they have any problems. They already know the nurses and they're familiar with the infirmary. So Martha, what else can the infirmary do? Oh, so, so the infirmary is a great place to visit when, Martha? You know, your child is sick or um, what about when they need some medicine? Would that be a great place to go? Yes, it is because Packing, we're bubble packing our medicine. That's right. So speaking of medication, in order to keep campers safe and make our help our nurses effectively give medicine, we ask that every every medication arrive at camp in a blister pack. This can definitely get a little confusing. So I'm going to try to answer as many questions as I can right now to clear it up for you. So if your daughter takes any medication, whether it is prescribed or over the counter, then the medicine needs to come to camp in a bubble pack. Um, we understand, you know, obviously if it is in a liquid cream or spray form, you can't do this. But if it's in a pill or gummy form, it does need to arrive at camp in a bubble pack. Um, this applies to over the counter vitamins, if there's any kind of supplement they take, anything that can be considered medicine, we need it to arrive in a blister pack. So Martha, do you know how we can get blister packs? Um, hopefully from Gordon's Pharmacy, or we uh, offer them online, and there's a form for that, isn't there? That's Anna? exactly right. So many of the larger chain pharmacies like Walgreens, CVS, Target, they will not prepackage your medication in a blister pack. And with some medications, if it's a controlled substance, it's hard to get the medicine in advance. So. One of the things that we've started doing to help with that is um, there's a form on your forms dashboard where you can request a blister pack to be sent to your house. And we do charge $2 for those to cover our costs for purchasing and shipping the blister packs. But that is definitely an option for you. Um, there's a great tutorial about packaging the medicine on our brand new website. Um, under parents, if you go to medication, you'll find the step by step there. But essentially what it is is Every time of day that your camper takes medicine, you need to have a blister pack. So if your daughter takes some medicine in the morning and then a medicine in the evening, you will need two separate blister packs for those two times of day. And if you look at the picture on the right, each one of those bubbles is one day. So if she were to take two medicines in the morning, then you would put both medicines in one blister pack for each day that she's here. So it gets a little, um, confusing, but we are happy to answer any questions, and it is easy for us to help you if you want to give us a call. Um, if your daughter takes medicine as needed, our infirmary stocks most medicines. We have a, a really well-stocked um, cabinet with most over-the-counter medicines. So if it's something that she only takes as needed, like I think somebody's asking about Claritin um, or something, Tylenol, like that, those are definitely provided by the infirmary at no charge. So if she gets a headache every once in a while or she has an allergy attack or whatever she needs as on an as needed basis, you do not need to send those to camp in a bubble pack. Our very well equipped nurses are able to provide all of that for you. So on opening day, please make sure that you stop by the tuck shop or the infirmary. And now now we're headed to our tuck shop. That's the name we have for our camp store. So we've touched on this a little bit uh, earlier, 
but we have brought a lot of our new apparel in-house, so we have a bunch of cute new shirts and sweatshirts coming in that everyone's going to be able to purchase, as well as, you know, things that you might need or have forgotten, so maybe your daughter needs some sunscreen or some earplugs, stuff like that. So our tuck shop is where you all will be able to pick up um, camp swag on opening day, but also where your daughter can go and get a snack or um, anything she might need at the end of the day. So it's open a little bit after lunch and then again um, right you know, before dinner. So there's uh, things that we get a lot of questions though are whether or not do I need to put money on my child's account or how do we pay for this? Well, there um, because we have your card on hand, you, we go ahead and set a limit. There's a form for that, you know, forms, forms, forms. But uh, you can set a limit on your card, and then you will be billed, and it will be processed at the end of the session. That's exactly right. We don't want you to have to waste time on opening day standing in line. So if you will complete the tug shop limit form on your forms dashboard in advance, then we will just charge you for what your camper actually spent the week after camp in. So there's no need to put money on account or set up anything like that. Thank you, Martha. All right, Martha touched on this a little bit ago, but forms, 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 that is our life right now. Um, if you go to the Keystone Camp homepage and log into your account, which I think most of you have done, if you need help resetting your passwords, the office is always happy to help with that. But once you get logged in, the picture on the left is what you will see. This homepage right here, my account or Camp and Touch, as we often refer to it, is the epicenter for your online camp experience. So the very first one up there is forms and documents. And when you click on that, you see this picture over here on the right. Um, and this has a list of all of the forms that you will need for camp. The forms that have the screen icon next to them on the left of the form name, those are forms that you can complete online um, and submit instantly. You don't need to print them out. They go pretty quick. So if you can get all of those submitted online, that is super quick. And then the forms above that, that have the barcode to the left of the form name, those are forms that do actually need to be printed out and submitted to camp. You can either upload it by clicking the upload arrow on the right-hand side. That shoots it straight into your daughter's account. Or you can also email, fax, or regular mail those forms back to us, but please do make sure that we get those back. Mm -hmm. um, one form that we often have trouble with is this parent authorization form. This form asks for your insurance and also at the bottom requires your signature. So a lot of times it's easy to overlook that. So please make sure that the parent authorization form has your signature. All right, speaking of Camp and Touch, Wow. Martha, what else can you do on Camp and Touch? You should send your daughter emails. Emails? You can email your camper? That's so wild. Email is a really fun way to communicate with your camper. The way the process works is you um, buy camp stamps. This is a charge that our um, system administrator, Camp Minder, charges us. Um, so unfortunately, we can't do anything about that. But you will buy camp stamps. It's a dollar a page to send an email, and um, you'll purchase some in advance. From this screen, you can also give camp stamps away. If there are family or friends that might want to email your campers, you're able to do that here. So um, to get to camp stamps, you go, you click on email, and then you go to camp stamps, and that brings up this form here. So the first part of emailing your camper is to purchase camp stamps. And then you will go to the actual email screen. So it works just like regular email. If you have more than one camper, you'll make sure to select who you want to email here. And then you'll type your email just like a regular message. Um, one thing to note is that this button right here that says, I would like a handwritten e-letter reply, you need to please make sure to select that so that your camper can write you back. So our process is every day at 12 o'clock, we print off all of the parent emails that we've received. So if you email anytime um, after 12 o'clock, the camper will get it the next day. 
and we pass those out. They go to the camper mailboxes and they'll have a chance to read them after lunch and reply if they have time and are not sleeping or having too much fun. So um, they will write it, write you back on a reply sheet. Please make sure to send your camper with pens. If the emails are written in pencil, the system can't read them. So please make sure your camper has pens. So they will write you back and then every day at five o'clock we collect all of the handwritten replies and we fax them back to you and they, um, it's magical how it happens Martha, because they have a barcode on the bottom and the system scans the barcode and it shoots it straight to your email. That's amazing. Isn't 2018 fun? Like it's really impressive. So that is our email system. Um, one more note while we're on this page is that we do not accept packages for campers. We are only able to accept flat envelopes, regular size. So please do not send gum or candy or magazines or anything like that in the mail. Don't forget about those fruit baskets, though. That's right. So while we don't um, accept packages, we found this works best to help the girls from being too competitive and it just really helps foster community when everybody's getting the same thing. But as Martha mentioned, we can accept fruit baskets. And this is done through a company called Camp Packs. They are local to Brevard, and they will deliver fruit baskets. There's two different sizes, and they also have an option to send a watermelon. That's my favorite. It's decorated with their names. It's oh so gosh. cute. So that's kind of a fun thing, but please make sure to tell all of your family and friends to not send packages as they will be returned unopened to sender. And that's really sad for everybody. So please make sure everybody knows about that. I would love to find a watermelon in my mailbox. <laughs> that would be fun. And one of the fun Keystone traditions is that instead of using a knife, because knives can be dangerous, a lot of times they will smash them on the ground outside the cabin and then everybody eats it. It's so much fun. It's a lot of fun. Wow. And then a lot of times they'll just go jump in the lake because they're pretty sticky, but that's a super fun keystone tradition. Okay. One of the other really cool things about your Camp and Touch account is photos. So we're talking a lot about camp and I know this is making you all wish that you were here. Um, a great thing we have, so our photo moms will actually walk around and take hundreds of pictures all day long, and then we upload those twice a day. So um, if you get into Camp and Touch, again, here we go again, um, you go to the little photo section, and you have the option of saving and going through all the pictures that they've posted throughout the day and seeing what your daughter's up to. Um, you can actually download and purchase some of those photos or just save them. And they're really just yours to do whatever you like. It's really fun. It's a neat way to feel close to your camper at camp. Um, it's kind of like a fun game of Where's Waldo. As you scroll through the hundreds of pictures, you get the chance to um, – Yes, we have really great photo moms. You get the chance to look for your child. And here's a Casey pro tip for you. I just highlighted the star in the upper left-hand corner. If you, when you're scrolling through pictures, if you select one of, if you select the star, it will put it in your favorites. So then after, you know, 12 days of 200 pictures a day, it makes it much easier to go through and find the pictures that you want to share. So I'm a camp mom. I have a nine-year-old who is here. She'll be staying in the August session, as I think I've probably told most of you. Um, but even though I'm here on camp, I still cannot wait for the pictures to be uploaded because I don't leave the office. So I may be on the property, but I have no idea what she's doing. So I get just as excited as you guys do to look at these pictures. Okay, moving on. I touched briefly on guest accounts. Um, a little bit ago. So guest accounts are where you can give your family and friends access to email and photos. We do this to protect um, the privacy of our campers while they're here. We want to kind of control who is able to contact them and also who can see all of our photos. So um, what you'll do is after you log into your account, you will go here to guest access and you just enter their first name and last name an email and you can also give them camp stamps from here so that they're able to email your camper without having to pay for it. So it's a fun thing. Um, one of my favorite things in the summer is I get a lot of grandmas calling for tech support because they want to see pictures and 
email, and I absolutely love talking to them. So feel free to, whoever you think may benefit from this, um, give them a guest account. And we're also, we're here to help everybody. So if they have any trouble, they can give us a call. Martha, can you believe we've made it to closing day already? I can't believe we've already made it through camp. So closing day actually happens a lot like opening day. So again, you're going to go through that same entrance. You're going to um, park. You're going to be handed a manila envelope with possibly, you know, those meds that you brought in the bubble pack. Um, you're also going to have your tug shop statement in there. And then uh, just like earlier, you're going to have your trunks loaded into the car and you're going to get to go up and greet your daughter who, I know this is always bittersweet for me, but um, everyone is just so excited to see each other uh, through the tears and all. And then we're going to hope to see you back next year. That's right. So also in the go home envelope, you'll have the touch shop statement. So you'll be able to see what your camper has purchased while she's been here. And if you have any questions about that, feel free to call us. So we have reached the end of our presentation. I know that's a lot of information that we went through quickly. Um, we are going to be sharing this webcast recording on our website. So if you want to go back and watch it anytime, if there's nothing good on Netflix, feel free to check us out. So what we would like to do now is if you have any questions, um, please feel free to type them in the question and answer box and we will answer. We'll be here until about 8 o'clock. Um, so if you don't have any specific questions, then that is the end of what we have um, scheduled to talk about. But you may benefit from hearing some of the questions because most of the time we all have similar questions. Um, I see that somebody asked, what is the best place to buy a trunk? We actually have a partnership with Everything Summer Camp. So um, if you go to their website, you can search for Keystone Camp, and it'll bring you to our camp page. And from there, they have many different trunk options. Um, usually, for most people, the medium to larger size trunks are effective and plenty have plenty of space. You probably don't want to get the smaller ones. I think the smaller ones are 13 inches. Um, I think at least 16 or 18 are probably what you want to do for most most sessions. Depending on if they're here for four weeks, then they would obviously need a larger trunk than the key campers. So I hope that answers your question. If not, please let us know. Um, do the girls get a pen pal before camp starts? They don't get a pen pal but before, that's but idea. that's a fabulous idea. I know I've offered, this is my little girl, Avery, here in this picture. Isn't she cute? Hey, Avery. Um, <laughs> so I have offered her up to many people. She is in third grade and loves to write people. So she'd be happy to be a pen pal, but that's definitely a great idea that maybe we can look at for the future. Um, I know a lot of girls that would help them feel more comfortable. Great question. Okay, so key campers, they actually have the same schedule as as our other campers. There are seven activity periods during the day. So key campers get to pick seven different activities that they'll get to do. We and really, um, yeah, get to cram as much in as we possibly can in that one week. That's right. We make the most of those six days. So if they pick seven activities and they don't like any of them, then they'll have the chance to switch before the session is over and get to try everything. Okay. Let's see. Yes. The uniforms, <laughs> the uniforms will be in Team T's. Uh, in the tuck shop for mother and daughter. In fact, we already have them, and That's they're really cute, and I'm excited about them. That's right. So if you are coming for mother-daughter, which unfortunately we are full. We've been full since about the end of February, so I'm sorry if anybody was interested. But if you are coming for mother and daughter, mother-daughter weekend, you can pick up your uniform and TT, team tees then. Maybe some cute polka dot pajamas. That's I'm right. Sure that we're getting some of those. Pink polka dot jammies. Okay, um, let's see. Drop off is really, now. yeah, I would say no more than an hour. Um, it kind of depends a lot on traffic. So if you get here in a rush of traffic, which usually happens right at 1030 and then right at 11, it takes a little bit longer. But it's a pretty quick process to get you dropped off. Um, and, um, yeah, get you dropped off, get the child settled, your daughter settled, and then go to the infirmary. Great question. Um, 
We don't provide decorations for bunks. If you, I've, Avery brought some twinkle lights, some battery operated twinkle lights last year, and also some pictures of our dog and our family. She didn't want to of her little brother, but she did. Um, so feel free to bring stuff like that. I mean, we don't want anything excessive or anything that needs to be plugged in. Um, but yeah, feel free to kind of decorate however you would like. Are opening for day procedures the same as Key Yellow? No, I believe Key Yellow is still that 9 a.m. It's only Key Blue, or it's still at the... Opening day for Key Yellow is between 10.30 and 11.30. So the procedure is the same, but there are only 24 campers coming in instead of 140. So um, you'll just come between 10.30 and 11. 11.30. Okay, let's see. Um, that's a great question about allergies. Our camp is not nut free at this point. It is something that we're kind of discussing, but as of right now, it is not um, nut free. We have we have approximately 25 EpiPens on camp. We keep them in every building, every cabin, every vehicle that we're in. The infirmary has many EpiPens. So um, it's kind of up to her if she wants to bring the EpiPen with her to meals, but if not, she's never far away from an EpiPen. And that's a training that all of our um, staff go through. They are local famous pediatrician, Dr. Wells. He's, he was my pediatrician. He's been here forever. Um, mm -hmm. He comes to camp and does a training for EpiPens. So all of our staff are trained on how to use them, and we are definitely – very allergy conscious. We have many safety precautions we take to keep our campers safe. Let's see. Okay. Do we need a uniform for the key sessions? Um, uniforms are good to have for the key sessions if they they do get their pictures taken in them. Um, it's definitely not a have to. I mean, they're more than welcome to borrow a shirt while they're mm -hmm. here. So it's kind of if they want to feel included then they can wear them, wear the uniform, but if not, it's definitely not something that we require. Okay. Okay, so for Key Camper, Key Blue is the only Key Camp session that has the later pickup time, mm -hmm. um, and the only reason that we do that is so they can enjoy the morning activities on Friday, but if you need to pick up early, that is not a problem. Mm -hmm. If you could just let the, the office know um, when on your transportation form, which is one of your form, form, forms, if you could just let us know that she's going to be picked up early, we'll make sure she has all of her stuff ready to go. Um, yes, we have a no electronics policy. It is so nice, Martha, to look out on the green and see the girls looking at each and other and not down, and their not down at their phones. Oh, it's really refreshing. So we don't allow any electronics. Um, if they come to camp, so like if the girls fly, I know that's the question we get a lot, is a lot of parents want their campers to have a cell phone for when they fly. And what we do with those is we lock them in the office. They actually stay in my office locked up. And then before the girls fly, I charge them and make sure that they are good to go. So um, no digital cameras, no Kindles, no iPads, nothing like that. No phones. Okay. Um, for the trunk, it typically tends to work out cheaper if you ship the trunk when you're flying. I think that the oversized baggage fees at the airlines tend to be more than what it costs to ship it. And it's, it's also a little easier because you can ship it in advance and then we pack it and send it back. We don't have to take it to and from the airport. It's nice not to have to worry about it and whether or not it's going to make it onto the plane too. Yes. That totally works out better. Um, okay, so one of the forms that you get to do is called bunk request. And on that form, you will get the chance to request whether she wants a top bunk or a bottom bunk. Um, both have advantages. The top bunk tends to be a little hotter, I think, and some of the girls don't like climbing up and down. But then the bottom bunk is not as fun. So it's really you have any? I personally always like to be on the top bunk when I was a camper, but it's really, you know, personal preference. That's right. And they're both great. Um, they're both really fun. Okay. We do not have the ability to have plug-in fans for the bunk. We do, if you would like to send a battery-operated fan, we sell batteries mm -hmm. at camp. 
Um, we just, our cabins don't have the electrical, electronic, electrical power. They don't have the power outlets to um, plug all of the fans in. And all of our cabins are open air. So the very top of our cabins is screened in and it's a nice fan. And we're in the mountains of North Carolina. So it tends to be very comfortable at night. Um, the only difference between key blue, key blue session and key yellow session are the dates. The key blue session is 729 through 83, and the key yellow is 85 through 810. Um, the key blue, they do, they are able to do activities on Friday morning because it is not a closing day. Um, but the key yellow campers get to participate in all of the team games activities, which are really fun. So they're, they're pretty much exactly the same. So I see where someone's asking what's the weather like at night. At night, well, it's beautiful. Um, it really is. It gets really nice and cool. A lot of times, our girls, you know, sleep in a sweatshirt, and um, it's a really pleasant. So we don't actually need air conditioning, which is great because we don't have air conditioning in the cabin. That's right. I think our lows get down in what, like the 60s. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very comfortable. Um, it is very dewy, so that's why we don't recommend down blankets, and that's also why we provide towels because we want to make sure their towels don't get moldy and they have fresh towels to dry dry off on. I see where someone's asking, um, what are the key sessions? Well, those are our, our starter sessions that happen towards the end of the summer. It's the one week session, which we have two of that happen in the umbrella of the August session, which is a two week session. So. Key yellow and key blue, just one week versus another one week. That's right. Those are the five night sessions for current kindergartners through current third graders. Um, let's see. Do I need to pack a dress for dance night? Um, when personal. Yeah, when Avery went, she was eight last summer, and we packed like one of those cute rompers with the shorts. Uh -huh. You know, I like that. Um, it was really funny at Target. She needed her dad and her brother to give her an opinion on which one was best. And she funny starts early um but I mean they don't it's not like prom and prom dress you know it's whatever they're comfortable in there are girls that wear what they wore to activities and then they're you know some of the older girls tend to snappy casual yes I like that description snappy casual that's right what do they do with their teams um we divide up by team several times a session so we may be playing rainbow tag no yeah yeah Rainbow tag where we divide up by teams and they get in groups by teams. And then our team game day is a time, it's kind of like field day at school where there are um, activities and the teams have a friendly competition against each other. So it's just kind of our way of dividing up camp um, for different activities. Um, we, for, if, if you're not able to, or you don't want to pack riding boots or they, decide they want to take horseback riding and then they don't pack boots we definitely have a variety of sizes in the barn they can borrow so that's um something that we can definitely provide and a note on the riding boots is that they need to be smooth sole shoes with about a half inch heel so um like a saddle shoe i guess mm -hmm. that's why they call it that um a saddle shoe or a cowboy like I got Avery boots at Target. I mean, they don't have to be professional cowgirl boots. We just want something they can slide in and out of um, the stirrups easily and are comfortable. And the heel helps them stop, I guess. I'm never in horse. <laughs> just kind of keep them in the stirrups. Keep them in the stirrups. Yes, that's right. Great questions, you guys. These are awesome. They're definitely things that we didn't think about. Um, what other questions can we answer for you? Martha, this is Martha's first summer at Keystone. She grew up going to a camp in the area. And um, one of the things that we were very excited to share with her is our food. I yes. get so excited in the summer because our food is so good. That's what I hear. I'm really looking forward to it. It's, I'm um, really excited about Miss Bertha's fried chicken. Yes, Miss Bertha is our cook that has been here for over 40 years, and she um, is amazing, like the sweetest lady you will ever meet. She loves children, and she is famous for many things, but her spaghetti, her fried chicken, her peanut butter squares, or other um, allergy-friendly desserts for sure. 
um, homemade Oreo ice cream. She's just amazing. So, and in the mornings, we have a hot breakfast option, which could be pancakes or eggs and bacon, breakfast casserole. And then we have a bagel station. We have a fully stocked um, yogurt and cereal bar with granola and fruit. And then lunch and dinner, we have a fully stocked salad bar um, with ham and cheese and turkey so they can make a sandwich. We do have peanut butter and jelly at every meal. Um, we have a vegetarian vegan option. And <laughs> um, it, the food is really awesome, really exciting. Oh, wow. I'm seeing a great question here, Anna. If my child hits her limit in the tuck shop, will I be notified? Yes. Um, most of our snacks, our snacks are a dollar, and then we don't sell big ticket items during the session. We limit those to open and closing day. But if she needs something that um, will put her over the limit, then we will call to get your permission. And we do have tennis rackets available. So if you don't want to pack a tennis racket, we have some. That's a, a great thing that um, I'm seeing another Great question. Are there a fair amount of girls who come to camp not knowing anyone? That's um, a great question because we actually do. And something that we really try and limit are we do allow for cabin requests and, you know, girls knowing each other in the cabin. But we try and limit that to geographical areas and schools. That way we don't have a bunch of girls that know each other and one that feels left out. Camp is definitely a place where uh, the girls all get to know each other and become friends with everyone. So great question, guys. Um, any others? I'm just really looking forward to the summer, especially because I am new. Um, I've not experienced the Keystone summer, so uh, this will be really great for me and a lot of you all that are also new. So, great questions. So, how is everyone tonight? Great. Um, I see my mom's on the line. Uh, she tuned in. Um, oh, it looks like we have another question. Um, so how many girls are in a cabin? Uh, do they have an adult in the cabin? Yes, that's a great question to answer. Um, so typically we have about eight girls in a cabin, sometimes 10 if those cabins are bigger. Um, so if those cabins are bigger, um, we'll have usually about three counselors in that cabin. We do have, um, we try and maintain a four to one ratio. <laughs> um, so that would be uh, four campers to one staff member. And we have to try and keep that through everything we do, whether it's, you know, activities or trips or in the cabin. Yes. So. Um, okay. Um, key blue and key yellow are full. Actually, our August session, our key blue, key yellow, we are we have very limited availability right now. Um, let's do have a couple more questions. We do have private showers in the cabins. Mm -hmm. Most cabins, all cabins have at least one. Um, some of our cabins have two private showers. And showers and bathrooms are located in the cabin. Would so be really don't... nice. You don't have to wander around the woods to use the restroom at night. That would be a real pain. Who would want to do that? Not me. Okay, let's see. Um, key yellow pickup is the same as all the other sessions, which is between 9 and 11 a.m. Key blue is the only session that has a different pickup. Okay, our, t our team names are Seminole, Cherokee, Apache, and Shawnee. And they all have different colors, and the girls get very passionate about that. Yes, I think a bandana is great for everyone to pack, because you never know when you'll need it. And the campers wear bandanas under both their riding helmets and their rock climbing helmets. So it kind of is a precaution for everybody. Um, mm -hmm. Keeps them safe. 
Homesickness, that's an awesome question. Um, as many of you know, our camp director is Paige Lamel. She's fourth generation of camp owner, and she's been doing this for 35 years. So she alone is an excellent resource for handling homesickness. Um, one of the things that I love about Keystone is that we keep them very busy during the day. Not busy enough to get exhausted, but they definitely are always looking forward to the next thing and are moving from time to time, from thing to thing, every, every activity period of the day and at night. So keeping them busy um, is definitely a way that we help with homesickness. We also have very caring camp directors and nurses that have been through this and kind of know what to expect. Um, if you go to our webpage under the parent section, there's a great article on managing homesickness as well as a couple resources for books that parents can read. Um, one of the things that we do encourage parents is in your writing and emailing, please don't dwell on how, how much you miss the child and the dog misses your daughter and the brother misses it. I mean, that, nothing's the same here yeah. at home without you. I mean, a really good letter is like, hey, you're not missing anything. We're just doing laundry. And watching the news. Yeah, I mean, we don't, we want them, it's such a fine line because you do want them to know you miss them, but you also want to encourage their independence and their growth. And there's a really great sample letter, both in our parent handbook and on our website um, for you guys to check out. Um, do they wear bananas during campfires? They do not. No. Nope. They wear their camp uniforms during campfire. Well, you all have some really great questions tonight. Uh, yes, the mother and mother, grandma, grandmas um, are amazing and incredible, but it might also help grandma to read what's on our website as far as encouraging the independence and not dwelling on the homesickness. Well, you guys have been really awesome. It looks like we um, have answered the questions that have popped up during this. We'll give you a couple, maybe maybe another minute to get all of the last questions in while we wrap things up. Yes, uh, we would recommend that you all purchase a Crazy Creature. Um, it's definitely not mandatory at all, but I know the girls typically really enjoy them, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah. I think most girls do. Um, crazy Creek chairs are the folding camping chairs. Um, if you go to Everything Summer Camp, they do have a link to them in the online store. They are cheaper here at camp, and you don't have to pay shipping, so that may be a better option. Um, laundry facilities, they do, we have a laundry room that all of the camper laundry gets done once a week. So we actually have staff members that do all of the camp laundry. It's really helpful. All right. Well, again, this has been Anna and Martha, and um, we are... Yes, that's a great question. Um, if a camper has experienced extreme homesickness, will parents get a heads up so we can be careful about letter content? Usually if it's an extreme homesickness case, the counselors will go to a director or Paige mm -hmm. or myself, and then we will um, handle it here and give parents heads up so they know what to expect. Um, we allow a duffel bag with a trunk. It's usually better if it's a key camper. It's not really such a need, but a hard-sided trunk or Rubbermaid container even is a, a great option because that's what they're going to be living out of, and it helps to keep things in order. It also helps with, like, air control. I know because we are in a – there's no air conditioning. Things can kind of get moldy, and sometimes in those soft trunk, everything folds down, and there's not a lot of air Circulation. Yeah, that's right. So we would prefer something hard sided and it doesn't have to be a trunk. Again, if you want to, I think Rubbermaid actually makes a trunk that's like just a plastic, um, plastic bin. Great question. You guys are great. We've been having so much fun tonight. 
That's right. We appreciate you guys joining us. Um, again, we will um, – Oh, I see. Um, I mean, part of Covenant Camp is the independence. So if you want to, you don't, don't feel like you have to put the key camper shirts and shorts together. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, they're, they may look a hot mess, but you know that they're having fun and gaining that independence of picking out what they want to wear. So if it's something that would be more comfortable for your camper to put the shirts and shorts together, then um, feel free to do that. But also know that they're going to be, they're going to be fine. When I picked Avery up last year, her hair was a texture I had never felt before. Um, it was like camp hair. There's nothing like camp hair. But she had had the best she time. She had had the best time ever. It was yeah. Teaching her daughters to advocate for themselves. That's right. The independence is a large part of camp. So um, you'll see. You'll see in the pictures how much fun they're having. All right, awesome. Well, we're going to jump off here. And um, <laughs> we're going to jump off here, but we're here. Our office hours are 8.30 to 5 right now, Monday through Friday. Um, you can reach us anytime, or you can send us an email. It's office at Keystone Camp. That goes directly to me, and if it's a question that I don't know the answer to, then I will forward it on. So we can't wait to meet all of you guys. This has been so much fun. And we will post this webinar on our website. So if you want to watch it again, or um, if somebody you know is coming and didn't have a chance to watch it, then you'll be able to see it. So we're going to jump off here. Thank you guys so much for coming. And we'll see you soon. Thank you for Thank listening you. to us, too. Thank you. Please stand by.